have you here today. Uh, if you haven't been with us for the last several weeks, we have been going through a series. It's called The Lies That We Love. And what we've been doing is we've been looking at lies that we have been told and that we have been sold that eventually we start to accept into our lives. And as I always say, maybe not necessarily verbalizing it, but how we behave and how we respond in a day-to-day -day actions, they start to uh, become part of our internal uh, mechanisms of how we work. And the thing is, is these lives do not enhance, uh, or these lies do not enhance our lives, although we, we are led to believe that they will, or that we even convince ourselves that they will. And what they actually do is they steal and rob our future joy that we could experience down the road. Um, all this is based on what Jesus says in John 10.10, 10, which is he says this. He says, a thief's purpose is to steal your joy and kill your dreams and destroy your eternity. My purpose, meaning Jesus's, is, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. So through this series, what we've been discussing is how do we avoid the lies of the thief so we can start to embrace the truth of the Son, meaning Jesus Christ. Today's lie that we're going to be looking at is this. I'll start tomorrow. Okay? I'm going to start tomorrow. Now, how many of you are experts at this lie? Just raise your hand and be honest right now. How many? Okay. I would say 98% of human beings, we are excellent at this lie. So I'm going to give you a warning before we really dig into this today, which is this. You're probably going to get upset with me at some point this morning and be offended by me at some point this morning. That's okay. Just don't tune out what I have to say. And remember the good times and the times that you do like me and just balance them out. Like today you might not like me, but most of the time you're like, ah, he's decent. I'm okay with him. And today you're going to be like, oh, I didn't like what he said there, but that's okay. And the reason for that is this. We love this lie. We love this one. Of all the lies that we're going through, this is the one we love. And the reason we love it is this. We use it as a cop-out, and we use it as, a, as an excuse to avoid doing hard things and things we do not want to do in our lives. And we love this one. Proverbs 22, 13, it says this. The lazy person claims... There's a line out there, if I go outside, I might be killed, okay? What this proverb is telling you is this. It's a person who basically is making excuses for why they can't do anything because if they leave out the door, the lion might be out there and the lion might kill me. Therefore, I can't go through that and I have a good reason why I don't need to do what I know I'm supposed to do, all right? In Ecclesiastes 11.4, says this. Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they, uh, they never harvest. So what do you have here is, and it's kind of a proverb here in Ecclesiastes, which is this, it's the excuse making. Well, everything's gotta be perfect before I do such and such. Everything's gotta be lined up exactly how it's supposed to be lined up in the way I think it has to be lined up before I actually engage in this activity or do this thing. And this all is rooted back into the, I'll do it tomorrow. And giving ourselves excuses to get out of things that we know we need to do today. So we start every week with this. How does this hurt us? Okay, so how does living out this lie hurt us and how does it play into the enemy's goal of stealing our joy, killing our dreams, and destroying our eternity? Let me give you some of the ways it actually hurts us. Number one, it prevents us from personal growth, okay? Putting everything off till tomorrow that never comes stops us from growing personally. Another thing it does, it prevents us from physical health. So not just personal growth, but physical health. Um, and this is a unique issue with those of us living in the United States because we live in such a privileged and wealthy society, and if we're going to be honest, gluttony is our default mode, okay? Just being honest with you, gluttony is our default mode. We actually have to actively choose to exercise where most of society and most humans that have ever lived on this earth, it was just part of their daily life for survival. Um, we are so privileged. We have so much wealth. We literally can sit on our butts every single day and do very little physical activity unless we force ourselves to. Uh, we drive cars so we don't have to walk. We do desk jobs so we don't have to stand. Um, and that's why you see in America why gluttony is our default, is we have a society geared and set up where you can let your physical health just get out of control. And it's okay because you're not doing anything on a daily basis that would help you control it, all right? It leads to missed opportunities, which directly leads to regret. When you live out this lie, one of the costs is you have a lot of stuff you look back in life on and go, man, I just wish I would have done that or I would have, wish I would have done this. 
but I didn't, and I kind of regret it because I should have done that. I should have done this, and it would have had different results for me. Uh, another way it hurts us is it impacts other people negatively because we fail to do things that could have benefited them. So it even hurts other people because there's things we could have done that would have benefited other people, and we just chose not to do it, put it off to tomorrow. Therefore, they don't benefit either because we didn't make a change or we didn't do what we need to do. And then the number one issue, the number one hurt is this. It prevents us from being used by God. Number one issue is God wants to use us. God wants to use our lives and impact this world to do kingdom work, and we don't allow him to because we keep putting it off and off and off. So someday I'm going to do it. Someday I'm going to get serious about it. Someday I'm going to do what God wants me to do. And that someday never actually comes. At the core of this lie is this, a complete lack of self-control and courage on our part. Um, if we boil it all down, that's where it comes from, is we don't have self-control and we lack courage. And therefore, we love this lie that just says, well, I can just put things off to tomorrow and then I don't feel bad about it. And living out this lie, what it does is it will continue to allow circumstances to control you rather than you having some control over your circumstances. And that's really the ultimate end hurt that it will cause in your life. So what is the truth? And how does that truth lead to life? So that's what we're going to look at now. Let me start with a couple of verses. The first one is this, Proverbs 13, 4. It says, lazy people, they want, uh, lazy people want much, but they get little. And then it says, but those who work hard will prosper. Okay? So in this proverb, it just tells you this. Lazy people, people who live out this lie of, I'll get to it tomorrow, I'll get to it to tomorrow. It says they want everything. They, they want to have the world, but they usually end up with little. But it says those who work hard prosper. Those that work hard get some rewards, get some um, accomplishments, get some things done. In Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verses 15 through 17, it reads this. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most, so this is assuming this is what wisdom is. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Okay? Here's the reality, folks. We don't get much time here. Okay, even if you get 90 to 100 years, it's not really a lot of time here. Those of you who are 90 or 100, you know that when you start looking back on, that went a lot faster than I thought it was going to go. Okay, we do not get much time here. We have to make the most of the time that we do have. James 4.14 describes our lives like this. He says, your life is like the morning fog. It's here for a little while, and the sun comes out, and it's gone. It, it evaporates it, and it's gone. Our lives are short, we have to make the most of the time that we have here. So, knowing that, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to challenge you in three areas of your life. Uh, so that's really what we're going to be doing is three areas of life that I'm sure that you have or you continue to actually use the lie, I'm going to start tomorrow. Okay? And this is a lie that you constantly tell yourself. My challenge today for you is this, is to reject that lie that you've been telling yourself and start to take action and do something different starting today. And let me make this clear. Today does not mean tomorrow morning. It means today. If you say, I'm going to start tomorrow morning, you're using the lie, which is I'll do it tomorrow. Okay? So these things I'm challenging you to do something starting today in your life in these areas. Um, so here are the three. The first one is this. Your physical health okay, is you need to be engaged in your physical health to some degree. I'm going to read to you another proverb. It comes from Proverbs chapter 24, and this proverb can be applied to multiple areas of your life, and I'm going to apply it here to our physical health, though, and here's what it says. It says, I walk by a field of a lazy person, the vineyard of one, of, um, one with uh, no common sense. I saw that it was overgrown with uh, needles uh, it was covered with weeds, and its walls were broken down. Then I looked and I thought about it, and I learned this lesson. A little extra sleep, a little extra slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. That could be very true of our physical health, which is a little 
stepping back a little bit. I'll get to it tomorrow a little bit. Yeah, I know it's important, but I'm not going to deal with it today. And before you know it, poverty is pounced on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an iron rod. Before you know it, you look at yourself and you go, man, I'm not healthy right now. All right? So here's a little thing. Somewhere around 65% of the United States population is classified as overweight. 65% right around that. And they go anywhere from 65 to 70%. But I'm using a low end. 65% of our population is considered overweight. I think it's somewhere around 28% is classified as obese. And they anticipate by 2020, uh, 2030 that it'll be over 40% of our population is classified as obese. All right? That's why I said you're not going to like me this morning. So you're going to get a little irritated. But these are things I think we have to discuss even as Christians. Want to guess what was the vast, overwhelming number one factor for those who were hospitalized or died of COVID? Does anyone want to guess, take a wild guess at what the number one factor was? Obesity or overweightness? Let me tell you the numbers. From the CDC, 81% of hospitalizations for COVID involved people that were overweight or obese. Okay, 81% of the uh, hospitalizations. 74% of the deaths were people that were overweight or obese, okay? And you can even add that number up a little bit higher on the desk if you add in people who um, have symptoms that come from usually overweight or obesity, which is diabetes. You could probably bump that a little more. I just kind of kept it at the 74. 81% of hospitalizations, 74% of deaths were people that were overweight or obese. Here's the thing. We need to take care of our bodies, okay? And we don't need to do it for others and what others think. That is not why you do it, and that's why a lot of us quit, is we think we're doing it for how the world looks at us. It has nothing to do when you're taking care of your body about what other people think. The reason you do it is because you are called to take care of what God has given you, and he has given you your body, and you need to try to take care of it the best you can. Now, what that means is not this. You're not looking to be a weightlifter. You're not looking to be chiseled. You're not looking at whatever... You're just looking to be healthy or healthier, either in the way you eat or the activity you do or whatever it is. You've got to find a way to be healthier. We do not want to be one of the 65% who are overweight or obese in our country. Okay, why? Because as Christians, God gave us one life, and we are here to try to make the most of it while we're here. And if you don't feel good about yourself, if you're overweight and you have all those different things going on in your life, you have other health issues and it takes away from your priority and your focus on kingdom matters and helping other matters because you have to focus so much on yourself because you start to fall apart earlier than you should. Okay? So my call here is this. Do something today and make a commitment today to start getting in better physical shape. Okay? Whatever that means, whether it's eating or whether it's some type of physical thing, make a commitment today and start today doing something to better that. Now, one of the things we have done at this church over the last several years is we have this Fitness Sunday. And recently, James has taken over the second and fourth weeks. Uh, so uh, Stephen used to do kind of like a cardio thing here and there while we were doing basketball. But second and fourth weeks now, James is committed to coming in here and teaching you how to do some workout at whatever age level you are to go here's some healthy standards for you to be at at your age level not to be superman not to whatever but just to start getting healthier than where you are today so real quick james i hate to pick you out like this but i've done it before how much weight have you lost over the last three or four years 305 so you've lost like 180 pounds or more so in the last couple years okay in a very slow, deliberate, it, hasn't been, it wasn't a fast thing, it's been a slow, deliberate, just trying to get himself back to a healthy place. And some of it I know is to honor God. Some of it I know is because he just goes, I want to be here longer. Okay, we, we don't want to be gone faster than we want. Kelly's going, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to assume those two things. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, I'm ready to go now, but I'm not asking you to put a bullet in my head. So that just means I'm at peace at going, but it doesn't mean I want to necessarily go right this minute. Um, so all I'm saying is we have tried to prioritize it as a church some because it's something we need to provide you opportunities to try to get healthier. 
But as an individual, you need to go, how do I get healthier? Annie's experience, this with your weight loss even, is your health has improved dramatically. Different medications you were taking, you don't have to take now. Like you've, you, are you off everything? Yeah, off, all gone, which were all diabetic stuff and all like that. And I'm not saying it's a miracle cure because once you kind of get to a place, you can't reverse everything that's been done. But that doesn't mean you don't try to get in shape. So anyways, I'm going to leave this one there, which is just this. Do something that will benefit your physical health that you've been putting off into the, and it's the best way I can describe it, the endless tomorrows. Because you know we all do this. I'm going to start tomorrow. I'm going to start tomorrow. I, you know what? If your plan is to start tomorrow, you're not going to do anything here. So do something today, whatever it is, if it's, I'm going to do five push-ups or I'm going to go run around the house one lap just to tell myself I'm going to start doing something, do something, okay? Um, I do believe this is something God desires from us. God goes, I give you one life. Do the best you can to take care of it. Second challenge is your spiritual growth, okay? So you have your physical health. You have your spiritual growth. So Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 4 through 6, it says this. When you make a promise to God... Don't delay in following through, for God takes no pleasure in fools. Keep all of your promises you make to him. It is better to say nothing than to make a promise and not keep it. Now, here's the deal. All of us have gone against it, I'm sure, at some point in our spiritual lives, where we've promised God we're going to do something and whatever, and we didn't do it. Um, the reason I want you to see that scripture is these are serious issues. Um, we don't play games with God. God is not someone you play games with. God isn't just your little buddy that you hang out with and like hit knuckles with and be like, hey, God, I got, he's God. And so if you're going to make commitments to him and all, it's a serious matter. And this is what Ecclesiastes is teaching us is this is serious stuff when you start talking about making promises to God. But I want to point out two different areas that you can choose to take this challenge and to start doing something today to change your future and where you're going and to have some personal spiritual growth. The first area is your spiritual, you yourself, focusing on you. Um, Colossians 1, 9 and 10, it says this, We ask God to give you complete knowledge in his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. So this is Paul towards others going, Hey, I'm praying that God gives you a better understanding of what God wants for you in your life. And he says, then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Okay? So the first side of this is this, to attain a better knowledge and understanding of who God is and what God wants from your life. And the result of that will be it starts to affect other people as well, and you will honor God in your actions. And so one area I would tell you you could choose is maybe you go, my big issue is right now I need to grow personally in my understanding and knowledge of Jesus Christ and my understanding of what's in the scriptures and how God wants me to live. And what I would tell you is today, do something about it, okay? If that means I don't read the Bible except for when I come to church, today, go home and before you go to bed, read a chapter somewhere in the Bible and go, I'm going to start reading a chapter a day. That's just what I'm going to do. It's at least five minutes start. I'm going to do a chapter a day. I'm going to do something to help my personal spiritual growth because as I do that, the fruit of that will impact my life but also the impact uh, the lives of others, okay? So one area you can focus on is your personal life, you yourself. The other area in this realm of the spiritual growth is a kingdom impact, um, other focus. So not about you per se, but about you serving others. Romans 12, 11 says this, never be lazy but work hard to serve the Lord enthusiastically okay the other area you could focus on is i think we're probably all here there are things we all know god calls us to do at times and to engage in and proactively do and we use the lie i'll do it when tomorrow and i call this the endless tomorrow loop there are some things I, I would place a bet on it. There are some things, a good majority of us in this room, God has been telling you to do for years. And you have used this live, I'm going to get to it tomorrow, for years and still have never done a thing about it. That's bad. That ain't good. 
okay? There's nothing good about that. But that's how we tend to live a lot of times in our spiritual life, which is someday, God, I might use my treasure to benefit your kingdom, but right now I got things I got to take care of, but I'll get to it tomorrow. Someday, God, I might use my time to impact other people with the kingdom of God and some people I know you want me to interact with and do something, but you've always been saying, I'm going to get to that tomorrow, and it never comes. Someday, God, you might be asking me to serve somewhere and use my life that way to serve some other people and benefit them, and and I keep saying I will someday when, when it's the skies are right and it's good to go out and plant or when the lion's not outside, that's when I'm going to get to it. And guess what? 15 years later, you still have that thought and you still haven't done anything about it. And the reason you feel somewhat okay about it is because you tell yourself the lie, I'll get to it tomorrow. And that makes you somehow make it work in your brain where you're like, I'm really going to do it and I'm really taking a step towards it, but you never really are. I said you weren't going to like me today. Okay. I understand that, but sometimes we have to hear things we don't want to hear. So I would encourage you to, in your spiritual growth, either personally or kingdom-focused, you need to do something today before you go to bed that's different than what you've been doing for the last two months that you know you ought to be doing that will benefit you in your knowledge of God or will benefit you in doing kingdom work for God. Do something. Stop deceiving yourself that you have endless time to focus on these things in your life because you don't, because death will be at your door before you know it. Wasn't that a happy thought? There it is. But it's true, okay? I bury way too many people that have the, the delusion that somehow we get to count our days here and all of us someday are going to get to being 85 years old and I can plan everything out knowing that I have till 85. You don't have that guarantee. We, none of us have that guarantee. Okay, that's not how life works. Third challenge is this. Take a risk. Okay? Take a risk of some kind. Um, do something you've been wanting to do for a long time or something you know God's been calling you to do um, that's a risk and do it. Start implementing it today. Do something. Take a risk. In James chapter 4, verse 17, it says this. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. It is sin to know what you ought to do and not do it. It is sin to know what God wants you to know or what God wants you to do, rather personal growth or kingdom growth or whatever it is. It's a sin to know what God wants you to do or what risk to take, and you keep going, nah, the timing's not right. That is the same as doing what we think often as sin. That's the same as going over here and doing bad stuff just not doing the good stuff we know we're supposed to do, okay? So my encouragement today with you on the third challenge is this. Take a risk. What is it that's been in your brain that you know, yes, I need to go do that, but I, I'm kind of scared to do that. That's kind of a risky thing. I don't want to do that, but you know you're supposed to be doing it. Today, start doing it. Take the risk, whatever it is. And the risk one here, real quick, it can tie into the first two, kind of. Maybe the risk is, yeah, I know I should start doing something about my health, but I don't feel like doing it. I just don't, I don't want to do anything with that. And I've been putting it off and putting it off. And I have 50,000 excuses and I have this and that. You know what? Take the risk today and stop making excuses. Stop saying I'm going to do it tomorrow. Do something about it. Okay? Implement something in your life. Here's the thing. Stop telling yourself the, uh, the lie that you're going to start tomorrow what you need to start today. Okay? Let me say that one more time. Stop telling yourself the lie that you're going to start tomorrow what you know you need to start today. This lie will only lead to you looking back on life wondering what could have been if I only did whatever. Put it, insert what you want into there. You can't do anything about the past. So stop using that as an excuse either. You can't do anything about the past, but you can do something about the present and the future. Take a risk, work on your spiritual life, work on your physical health. Start doing something today to change where you're going in the future. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father.